Welcome back guys. In this video we'll take a quick look at the latest Raspberry Pi ISO that I have built. And this one includes the Batrium software and the SolarSys software and of course it's the new open source stuff. If you want more information regarding this head over to my webpage about it. Most of the information are here. If you have any deeper thoughts or questions regarding this, head over to the DIY Powerwall forum and you will get your answers that you want or need. If you have any issues with the software, the Batrium or the SolarSys, please head over to GitHub and report the issues there and we will try to make our best to fix them. If you want to supply some extra code or help, you can do it there as well. Or if you want to help out my channel or my work, please feel free to go to the description of the YouTube video and check out the Patreon or PayPal links. So let's get going. Start by heading to my webpage. You can see the address in the link below and you have it on the screen here. When you reach the webpage, you scroll down a little bit until you find the download section. I prefer that you use the first one if you can. That one have the built-in AP support where you actually surf to it. When you have inserted the SD card into your reader writer, you open up your favorite program, in my case the Win32 Disk Imager, and I write the image that just downloaded minutes ago. When that is done, you insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and boot it up. So let's see if we can find our Raspberry Pi now. If you have a wireless network on your system, this is the easiest way. Connect to the GraphPi wireless network that has just come up. When connecting to this, it will take a little bit of time until it actually is connected. When that's done, you will head off to the Raspberry Pi itself. So you start your favorite browser and head to 10.0.0.1. This will present you with a very simple interface. The interface is made for a mobile app, but it works on the computer as well. Scroll down a little bit and you will find the settings for the wireless network. Choosing the wireless network that you are on and then you just insert the password for it. When that is done, you will be pressing the connect button. Beware of that the Raspberry Pi will now reboot and go into the new network. When that's done, we will head over to the next phase. When you have rebooted the Raspberry Pi, it's time to find it in the network. There are several ways to do it. You can either go to your router and find it in Lisa's table, or you can on some computers actually ping it by pinging graphpi.local as well. There is also a couple of tools out there where you can use to find it. If not, check my older video and see how I show you guys how to do it with the screen. Beware of that this video today will not conclude or include actual installments or stuff like that. We only show you the new feature of the access point that we added. So let's go to the Raspberry Pi. My Raspberry Pi is located at 192.168.8.107. As you can see, this is the version 8. If we log into the machine, we'll take a quick look at how that looks. So when we are in the machine, I generally work as the root user. You don't have to do that. Under the energy folder, you will have a bunch of folders, including the Watchmon UDP listener. That's where this code is stored. Inside here, you see all the configuration, payload and everything. This is included directly. And if you want to upload it or update it, you can run git pull. When you're running the git pull, this will basically just download and go for the new code. The Batrium listener is also automatically started. For those that use the console, you just use system CTL, status and Batrium. That's how you get hold of it. You can run status, you can run restart or stop or start. You can also disable it if you want. All this is also possible directly from the web interface. If we go back to the Batrium again, if we go back to the Grafana again, and we go into the webmin UI. You have it under the admin. We head to the webmin UI. We need to accept the certificate. And we log in as admin and admin. When logged in, you go to the system and you go to the boot up and shut down. Under here, you will find everything that you want. For instance, the Batrium service. And you can see that it is started with a boot and running now. 
you will also find the solar stuff. So if we go down a little bit to solar, you will see that we have the solar MPI, solar PCM and solar PIP. That's three different folders for the solar stuff. If we are in the energy folder and we list that one, you will see that we have folders for MPI, PCM and PIP. So this is basically where we have the solar sys project. The solar sys project itself is also very, very simple. It's currently based both on the NPM package and it's also residing in the GitHub folder. For those who want, you can run this as well. You can run it manually and you can run it via the system CTL. There will be more videos out about this in the near future. Currently, this is quite advanced for some people and I intend to do it a little bit better. The new functionality is the headless setup that you already saw in the beginning. The headless setups makes it possible for you guys to actually set up the wireless network without actually SSHing to the server or doing it with a screen. This is rather simple, but it doesn't leave out the fact that you need to find IP for it afterwards. If you screw this up, you can always reset the wireless configuration. To reset it, you can just enable it by shorting the GPIO 18 against the 3.3 volt. It's recommended to do this with a resistor in line. And if you do that 10 seconds, the system will reboot and reset everything back to the AP default. You can also do this in console. You go to the folder mentioned above and you will see the initial setup. You run the initial setup with Python, answer no on the first one. And on the next one you answer yes to reset the configuration. The last question you will get is about rebooting device. Press yes and enter and the device will reboot into host AP mode again. With AP default you can once again log on to that GraphPi AP and reset the wireless network. This could be handy if you move location or change your network. Be aware of that I will be hosting two different versions of this version 8. And the reason for that is that this wireless host AP system does not work very well with all the network cards that you can use on the Raspberry Pi version 2. If you are going for the Raspberry Pi version 3, you have no problem and can use the default image. So guys, I want to thank you for watching this video. In this video I just took you quickly through a couple of steps of installing the Grafana ISO or resetting it if needed. This is merely just a quick tutorial video and if you have any questions feel free to put them down below or go to the DIY Powerall forum for more information. So once again guys, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. There is a lot more content coming regarding this new software and I will be producing it also based on your input and suggestions. So thank you once again and see you next time. Bye.